Hey folks, it's Dave here in Studio C and I got Apple Hockey here on the table and I kind of want to show you my setup and then I'll run through a little bit of the game. Um, this is not necessarily a tutorial, this is kind of how I play the game. Because uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, hey, show some gameplay. So I'm going to show some gameplay here and get up close with the cards. Uh, again, uh, you want to get the um, the version with this big book here. It has all the instructions and it has all the charts. And basically what we've done here is you see all the charts here. Uh, my friend ID Jester actually made all these charts here. He basically took them out of the book and put them in Excel so you can get at them right here without having to flip through the book, you know, over and over and over for the charts. Now, before you say, well, look at all the charts, I do want to say one thing. A lot of these things here, you tend to start memorizing as you do with APA. Uh, games and that's one thing Ron always told me he said don't let the charts you know uh, dis, uh, dis whatever disillusion you uh, they're they're easy to read and easy to memorize and a lot of times I don't even need to look at the charts anymore so let's get down here so uh, this is the uh, the hockey sheet that comes with the game and it shows you uh, this is the 83 84 season and you can see it's got uh, you know Boston and Buffalo and Hartford at the top, and it shows you uh, the projected lines for that team. So this shows you all the guys that came, all the cards that came in the game, and it shows you the lines that they would suggest. Again, you could use whatever you want, but they are suggestions here. And this is a couple of pages, and even on the back here. So print out your team sheets, or you don't have to. You can look at them on the internet to get your lines. Uh, also on here, if you notice up here, they have uh, the bench minor rating. And then they have the uh, the assist per game rating and then a couple of power play and penalty kill ratings. What you're going to do is on my handy dandy score sheet over here that actually myself and ID collaborated on. There's a place over here for that. So you can put your bench minor rating, your assist rating, and then your penalty, uh, your power play and your PK rating right here on the score sheet. This is actually a really nice score sheet. I colored it all in in the whole bit. So uh, I, I would put those right here on the score sheet so you never have to refer back to this again. Alrighty, uh, so I have my teams all set up here. Uh, so I got uh, Minnesota taking on Detroit here in 1983-84 action. And uh, let, me, let me just run down a couple of things here. So over here, I got my ODAI. <sighs> ODAI. So that's my ODAI ratings along with my, uh, my change on the fly chart here. So I use that when I'm changing lines, and I'll show that in a second. Uh, then I got my assist chart along with my... Um, uh, who's gonna how you search for assists here? So these are like my little cheats on the side here. Uh, I got my dump and change charts, jump and chase charts rather, right here. Uh, this is the meat and potatoes of everything. Okay, the four check three, two, and one. That's gonna be the bulk of your gameplay right here. Uh, on this side, it's the uh, offensive defensive face-off win. So if you're in the offensive zone. And, and you win a face-off, then if you have the offense, then you go to the offensive chart. So you, I use that instead of this on offensive zone face-offs only. It's just, it's just a little easier to get a shot, and um, it's a little harder for them to get a shot and break out of the zone on defense. And there's no ODAI reading over here, I believe. I think that's just all straight up, okay? Over here is the goalie save. So I got a potential goal and a normal save. So if it's on target, I go to potential goal. If it's a save, then I see what happens on the save. And again, what's great about this is that uh, these are pretty much the same. The first six are the same, so it's Left D, right D, center, left wing, right wing, and uh, face off. So if I roll a goalie save and it's a one, I know it goes to the left D. If I roll a six, then I know it's, uh, he smothers it for the save. So it goes through all five positions and then to a face off is what it does. And then it actually kind of does it again. So the charts here, you really can memorize them pretty quick. Then you can see it's pretty much goal all the way down from 19 to the bottom here, all the way down to 45 with the exception of 38, which it might be a penalty shot. And I've had that come up once or twice. Uh, but so this is the meat and potatoes here. So I have those up front. And again, I put them in these, these stands here, these little L brackets here, so I can just see everything so I don't have to keep looking at the charts. And a lot of times I use these for reference because I've got them pretty much memorized. Uh, in the back here... Uh, that's my penalty chart. I highly recommend this. Let me bring this out a little bit. This was Mike Berger's creation, I believe it was. And it just breaks down the penalties because the penalties in this game are an absolute nightmare to figure out. So I printed this out, and I go by this more or less for my penalties. Again, since I'm not playing a full season, I'm not too concerned with penalty minutes. So 
for me, if I can go down this chart here and figure out my penalties in 30 seconds or 10 seconds, I'm fine. Over on this side, I got my rebounds and my tip-ins. And also a couple of cheat notes here. I got my, my wide uh, shot chart. One I created here, this is um, for my shift. So if I'm playing four minute, four lines, it kind of gives me an idea what I'm going to do for my, my lines here. I don't know if you can see that with a glare. Um, so it just tells me when to change lines. And also a couple of notes on matchups and face off with extra skaters. And if, if it's four on four, you go to a four check three. So I, I kind of reminded myself there. And also a shot rating plus two. Uh, the matchup control shot chart. It's in the book. I just put that here so I can read it. And then obviously I need my face-off chart out here all the time. So that's my setup. Um, the first thing I did, though, as you can see, we have a place for the, uh, the ODAI. So I put them here. So as I roll out lines, I take the ODAI and I put it here. So you only got to do it once for each line. And that was the big thing that hung me up on Apple was the ODAI. But again, you only use it over here when you're using four checking three two or one you don't use it on power plays you don't use it in the in the offensive zone so it really doesn't come into play a heck of a lot oh and also off to the side over here this is my power play so when i go on the power play i drop that in the front and i use that so that's just the power play shot here in excel that we printed out i added some color to it so i can see who the power play team who the shorthanded team is and when the power plays up I take that away and I go back to my four check two three. So that's my setup here. So let's play uh, a little bit of gameplay here. So I got my dice off to the side here. So I'm going to roll for the face off. So that's a four. So if I look at the face off here, so this guy over here, Broughton, has a four. And Steve Eisman, I think that might be his rookie year. He's 18. Steve Eisman, what does he have? He has a two. So this guy is plus two. So I rolled a four on plus two. So I go over the chart on plus two, a four is advantage left D. So this guy is the advantage. So it's going to go back to Brad Maxwell. So Neil Broughton wins the puck back to Brad Maxwell. Let's roll the dice. So we have a 53. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we have a matchup. So this is when I do need my book. So I take my book over here. So of course we have to have a matchup right off. So I got to pull out my book and go to my matchup chart. And it's the left D. So on a matchup, I go to my left D and I roll the dice. And we get an eight. So the left D battles along the boards with the opposing right wing. So what I need to check is the left D C rating and the opponent right wing C rating. Okay, so it's the left D and the right wing. So let's pull that off to the side. And of course I just messed up all my cards here, moving that around. Sorry there, Greg, Greg Stephens in the net, by the way. So it's going to be the, the, the left D and the right wing. So I go to the C rating, and you can see over here he has an 11 slash 9. So the 11, he's on offense, so he gets the 11. Over here, it's a 12 and a 12. So Duguay wins this matchup by 1. However, we still need to roll on this chart right here. So this little thing right here, this little chart's in the book. So there's still a chance that Maxwell can win it even though he lost by one. So we're going to roll the dice, and we get a seven. So six to 12, it goes to the winner. So the winner was Duguay. So Duguay will take the puck. Now let's go back to the matchup chart here. I'm sorry I'm bouncing around on my camera. So if I go back to the matchup chart, and it was, I think we had a five here. Battles on the board with the right wing. So if the defense wins... It's uh, interception, opponent, right wing, and we mark off some time. So what we would do is Duguay takes the puck. We come over here, and we have to mark off. Let's see right here. So I'm going to go 30 seconds. So I just put a little slash there. So 30 seconds comes off the clock, and Duguay gets the puck. So that's a matchup. So anytime you roll a 53, you get a matchup uh, in the game. That is optional. I like to use it when I remember so anyway, so let's continue on. So let's take the dice here and roll it up again here in a 22. So we go over to Duguay, and Duguay 22 is a 1. Now when I check the ODAI, there's no change at all, so I don't even have to ch check anything on the chart. So when I go to 4 check 2, a 1 is a shot on goal. So Duguay is going to get a shot on goal. Again, doubles in app are usually good. So like I say 22 is a shot on goal, 11 is a shot on goal. 55, 66. So you can see doubles are really good. So we got a one with no adjustments. That's a shot on goal. So now we're going to do the shot on goal. 
He's got a shot range of 24, which means I need to roll 24 or less for it to be a potential goal. What I do is because no matter what happens, if it's a save or uh, whether it's a potential goal or not, we have to go to the goalie card. So we're going to roll a Malocious card. So I roll two sets of dice. So I got the, the red and the white, and then I got the, the light and the dark over here as well. So, so we're going to roll them all together to save a little bit of time. So 35... It's not a shot on goal because he has a 24 shot rating, so it's out of the shot range. And then over here we have a we have a 15. So on Malosha's card, a 15 is a three. Now I memorized that, so on my normal save, it's a save picked up by the center, and an X means time comes off the clock. So Dugay takes the shot, Malosha makes the save, and Neil Broughton comes in to swoop up the puck. So I come over here. And I mark off 30 seconds. That's how I do it here. Um, there's 40 ticks in the game, so I just set it up here. So I got 1 to 20, and I just make the X across off a minute. And also, i got to give a shot on net to the Red Wings here. So I'm just going to make my little period 1 shot by the Red Wings. So there's one shot on net, and we've played one minute of the game. So now, Neil Broughton has it. So let's, let's do a couple more plays here. So here's Broughton now. 55, that's usually pretty good. So a 55 is a 1. The ODAI for Detroit in line 1 is a 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. We come over here, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's a shot on goal. So let me come down and write this over here. Check that off. Shot on goal for Minnesota. Broughton has a shot range of 24. So let's roll two sets of dice here. And 52, that's out of range. So we go to 45. So Stefan makes a save. A 45 is a 6, and I remember 6 is a whistle, okay, smothered for a face-off. So I put it here on the logo, and that reminds me it's a defensive zone face-off. And again, we come over here, and we mark off 30 seconds off the clock. So, um, again, so again, I, I really like how I've memorized this. So the first five are positions, and a 6 is a face-off. And again, 7 to uh, 11 and then 12 is another face-off. So the charts are kind of repetitive, so you can memorize them real easy. All right, so let's do a, a, a def, an offensive zone face-off. So again, face-off four against face-off two. So Broughton has a plus two on the face-off. So we're going to roll some dice here and check the face-off. That's a six. So we come over here on advantage two, and a six is advantage left wing. So Neil Broughton wins the face-off. To Tom McCarthy. Now, we don't use this chart here, right, because we're in the offensive zone, so we're going to come over to this chart. So that's why I have these three charts here, you know, with the goalie one being in the middle. So the offensive zone, again, this is optional, but I love to use this one here. So in the offensive zone, Tom McCarthy's going to roll. So Tom McCarthy rolls a 52. A 52 is a 27. So we come over here in 27 is intercepted by the center. So McCarthy can't make a play, and it's taken over by Steve Eisenman. We come over here, and we drop another 30 seconds off the clock. So let's roll for Eisenman. Stevie Eisenman now, a 54. A 54 for Eisenman is a 32. Now we're not in the zone anymore, so we're going back to normal play, which is where most of the stuff's going to take, uh, take place. So a 54 is a 32. Four check, 32, 32. It's a pass if we pass the physical check. If not, it's intercepted by Detroit. So I got a 14. So what I got to look for is the intimidation numbers. So I got 4, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. So they don't get it. So I needed a 14 to steal, but I don't get it, so I pass. So I can pass. I think I can pass it to anybody. So I'm going to send it over to John Ogrodnik. So John Ogrodnik now has the puck. John O'Gronick. So that's how you do the, when you get one of these physical checks, you add up the intimidation ratings, and um, that's where you get your number there to see if they steal it or not. So a 41. So O'Gronick with a 41, he has a 5. Now remember, there's no adjustment, because that's a 0 on this line, so it's just a 5. I go to 5, and that's a, what we call a soga. Tebow calls a soga. That's a shot on goal opportunity. If, now on a soga... You check the die roll, it's a 41. If anybody has an assist rating of 41, this guy gets a shot. And so I get 35, 35, 35, 41. Brad Park does. Wow. Brad Park has an assist rating 
of 41. So he will get a shot on goal because of that. If Park didn't have that 41, it would be no shot on goal. And you can see that means if no shot on goal, be a neutral zone faceoff. But there is a shot on goal because Brad Park has a 41. So now, so Agrodnik's going to get a shot. So let's mark off another shot for Detroit. So John Agrodnik, a rating of 26. So let's roll the dice. Now again, I roll all four to save some time. 23, that's in range. So John Ogrodnik, his shot's on goal. Oh, but a 66, that's always a save. Almost always a save. So Maloche, 66 is a one. And that's a save, and it's picked up by the left defense. So Ogrodnik takes his shot. Maloche with a save, and Brad Maxwell comes in to scoop it up. And we take another 30 seconds off the clock. And that's kind of how it plays. Um, I get this thing to flow really nice. Um, there's a few other wrinkles in here, and maybe I'll do some videos later on. But I just want to give you an idea on how this game flows and how fun it is. Um, and just kind of like show you my setup here. It looks, it looks pretty daunting, but once you print these out, I mean, and these things, again, they, they stack right up. You know, so I, I put these away really fast. And I can set up really fast. So anyway, so that's a little app of gameplay, how it goes. So we saw a matchup, we saw an offensive zone, we saw a couple shots on goal, no goals yet. Um, but anyway, so I'll continue playing this out, and I'll post the score on the Facebook page. And uh, anyway, um, so anyway, I'm Dave, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.